Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Insta360 GO 2 purely for the use on an FPV quadcopter because this guy and the first one is designed to be a wearable camera and the first one found a second home in FPV just because it is a really tiny small camera and unfortunately nobody is making really tiny small cameras in fact quite the opposite we are having to take really big cameras from GoPro who has no interest in FPV cameras at all and rip them apart and potentially damage them and blow them up that's not fun at all so with this camera I can see why there's so much excitement about it because it's tiny it it doesn't weigh much and uh, the first one wasn't uh, fit for putting on a quadcopter and these cameras are very expensive you know so uh, really we want to have all of the best features for the price <laughs> it's got a magnet on the back there that actually will that affect the weight let me uh, just tear that again so let's stick that on there uh, it's coming in at 26 grams there so uh, very light actually we can compare that to this as a GoPro naked light whatever you want to call it this is the Hero 8 and what's this one here so 29 grams yeah so you know I think I put this one is about 360 pounds I think this one was 300 quid as well so uh, I think you know my conclusion of this is going to be that you know if you're spending a lot of money I probably go with a, a naked GoPro uh, but you know this is the alternative and uh, you know it, it's it's quite expensive as well so be aware of that and uh, it has some limitations uh, this time we've got a removable lens this is one of the uh, problems with the first one is that you know bash the lens up and uh, you couldn't replace it so you were absolutely finished uh, ND filters as well on there although I haven't been using the ND filters so uh, yeah this thing uh, does not come FPV ready out of the box it's a, a bit strange uh, to get going so this case here just like uh, the first one it's a charge case but this time the case is also used to connect to the camera so you can see that it's actually via Bluetooth so the idea is that you don't have to connect it to your phone and it takes a couple of seconds because you know it's uh, connecting via Bluetooth We've also got uh, charging here so USB type C and also a tripod mount but also these legs come out here to FPV stuff right <laughs> okay uh, it comes in a mode that I think is just called like standard mode, uh, which is no good. Um, and it records in that. So one of the things that uh, really caught my eye with this uh, second one is the fact that it can record in uh, 1440p uh, up to 30 minutes uh, and up to 50 FPS. But actually, what? Is going to be usable for us FPVers is that we need to use a mode called pro mode you can see there and uh, if you don't go into the app and change the button then it's always going to uh, show up with this uh, other mode you can see what time-lapse uh, HDR video uh, and then just normal video here and you can see that uh, that one is recording now it uh, does 50 FPS but you can't use flow state stabilization with that and uh, you can't have the FPV mode so yeah great that it's got that maybe but not for FPV I didn't get good results out of this at all so um, yeah in reality this camera you can use uh, for 10 minute video recordings in 1440p at 30 frames per second and then the file that is saved will let you uh, you know do flow state stabilization and uh, FPV 
uh, after the fact. But all of the other uh, camera modes of 50 FPS, nope, you can't do that. It puts like some sort of very gentle built-in stabilization that you cannot change. Uh, no good for FPV whatsoever. But uh, to charge it, you know, the thing is magnetic, so you stick it in there and close this case and then it just charges up there. You get a red light which goes green when it's fully charged. And similar to the original, it says that you can get 30 minutes of battery with the internal battery or 150 minutes uh, while using this charger if you want to you know, charge it up again. So that's better than the 60 minutes uh, that you got out of the first one with its uh, charging case. Uh, the other thing with this one is it is waterproof. It is IPX8 to 4 meters or 13 feet, whereas the other one was uh, IPX4, just uh, water resistant. Uh, the internal memory is more, so uh, it's 32 gigabytes instead of 8 gigabytes. Now, I thought this would be a great camera to try on my Emacs Baby Hawk HD. And I purchased, uh, I think it's from a UK supplier, this mount that is useless and cannot be used. Whoever thought it was a good idea to put out a mount before actually trying it in your camera, you know, maybe they got the uh, dimensions or something. But the way that uh, this guy records is you press in there. So, yeah, it fits this camera, but... The minute that you slide it into here, it turns it on and it's wedged together, so you can't use this. Whoever made this, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, were you trying to get out there first before everyone else? Because uh, it doesn't work. I've had to design and 3D print uh, my own with TPU, uh, but uh, got some good results out of that. So uh, we can take a look at that later. Uh, just like the first one, it's a 180 degree capture and then it, it crops the size down. Uh, it can be used in any orientation and actually when you use the, uh, the horizon lock, uh, this thing can do complete uh, rolls and it will stay fairly locked. It is kind of strange. Uh, uh, maybe good for using with a cine whoop, but um, I prefer to have the FPV stabilization, which is a bit like hyper smooth. It, it's not as good as a uh, real steady. So this clips in here really nicely. Uh, you have to have a little bit of play in here otherwise the vibrations that goes to the gyro when it mixes those two together is just not going to work you're going to get lots of uh, jitters and rubbish video ah you're probably wondering how much my baby hawk hd is weighing so it's an 850 milliamp 4s battery uh, that is 277 grams so i've imported a flight that i did into the Insta360 Studio 2021. I wouldn't advise doing it on the phone, but you can do it on the phone, you know, and upload to social media if you want to do that. Uh, but you can do all of that stuff in here as well. Uh, so um, flow state stabilization is where it locks the horizon. Uh, it does not lock, uh, so if you do a backflip it won't lock that, but if you go to do a roll like that <laughs> then you get a, uh, uh, you get like a, a funny thing that happens, but it, it does uh, lock it. And then this is where the FPV stabilization on and you, you can see uh, the rolls this time. Now if I just drag in the file which is the normal video, you can see all of that information is gone, so it puts some sort of weird stabilization on it that's oh, it's just not very strong and it vibrates around a bit. I'll let you have a little look at that. And then we can go and take a look at the Pro video. I think it's uh, very good. Uh, is it as good as how much it costs? You're going to have to decide that, but uh, much better than the first one. And I uh, can definitely see it being used in a more professional manner than the first one as well. So this is a flight done 
with just charging the camera and putting it into a mount unbeknownst to me at the time but do you see that flick there and all of this sort of weird stability uh, so we are looking at 2560 by 1440 at 50 fps here and I was like something's not right here you know have they built in FPV stabilization I would say absolutely not and is flow state there I don't think so either because I'm noticing these uh, funny movements in the mount I guess you know if you weren't using this camera for FPV then that would be fine but I'm noticing all sorts of vibrations that just shouldn't be there with a sort of a flow state applied to it so it's a real shame that I guess in the end of it again you see a little kink there as I'm diving I guess that the choice was either to have 50 FPS and uh, a little bit of stabilization as it records so that it doesn't overheat the camera or 30 FPS to record the proper gyro data uh, and not overheat so I think potentially with a camera this size those were the two options. I think another thing you need to think about with this camera as well um, is the fact that the battery is built in so you're probably only going to get a year to a year and a half of full decent usage before the battery starts to de degrade that's if you are using it a lot but uh, anyways I did not like the setting at all now it is an overcast day but uh, with the original uh, go you could see jello uh, in the feed even on a dull day uh, that's not happening I'm just seeing sort of vibrations really from the stabilization not working very well so uh, I did the uh, flow state uh, FPV stabilization live uh, whilst I was flying, uh, but um, you know, I was actually quite impressed with that. I think the image does go a little bit too dark sometimes with the dynamic range, but uh, so much better than the first one, and I think you could definitely use it to get good footage from. Alrighty, let's go for an FPV flight with this guy in the only mode that matters to us which is the pro mode and I have to say it was an absolute pain figuring out the settings all right perhaps this uh, camera isn't just for us but it definitely is not the most intuitive camera to set up for FPV. So obviously things that uh, I'm going to be uh, looking for. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> We've got a friend here wants to look at the camera. <laughs> That's cute. But things I'm looking for obviously, you know, wobbles and stuff like that and jello jello's a a big thing with it insta 360 you know something that gopro does much better and something that i don't think i'm going to be able to showcase that much today because we don't have any sun but i tell you for certain if we're getting any jello and wobbles without any sun then it's going to be difficult to recommend this camera so uh, you know the specs look pretty good uh, 40, 40p 50 fps but I'm afraid uh, if you want to use that 50 fps then uh, you lose the flow state stabilization flow state stabilization uh, only works with the uh, 30 fps and the pro setting
Now I'm looking through my DJI camera here and everything's looking pretty nicely. Uh, one thing that uh, I found with the Insta360 Go, the uh, original one, the first one, is that you really had to soft mount the uh, camera to get any decent footage out of it. And I've kind of done that here, but it's a pain to have to do that. You know, I've got two models, I think, that the original Insta360 Go actually gives a decent result. The rest, it's all Jallo, and uh, that could probably be the case here, uh, which is sad, you know, because uh, Insta360 definitely given us more uh, chances and, and praise and with FPV than GoPro ever have but even still uh, it seems that, that GoPro uh, you know despite them trying not to uh, please us managed to do so still with their anti-vibration technology Uh, GoPros have always been great at that. Uh, I guess we are just lucky to uh, be able to take advantage of that because it is definitely not for us. It's for the skiers, it's for the extreme, you know, skydivers, the Red Bull lot, whatever. Uh, yeah, not for us. So I want to encourage Insta360 to 360 uh, to just bring us these great products, but to uh, work on the uh, the vibration thing because we've got a lot of vibrations with drones. And, uh, you know, we need that to be bob on if, uh, if we're going to be piling and investing money into you which which you know I obviously want to do because it's only going to get better <laughs> this is fun messing with these trees man I don't fancy climbing one of these trees today though so I need to behave a little bit but uh, if I want to get cinematic footage then got to play with the trees a bit, I got to do a bit of diving, you know. Ah, oh, this, uh, this Emax model is superb. That's one thing that I could definitely recommend. Although, I have to say, it was a bit of a pain uh, because the, the Bynum Fly version didn't hook up the, uh, the DJI S-Bus. But anyways, that's my take. That's my take on the Insta360 Go 2. Uh, if the footage looks great, then there you go. You know, you've, you've seen it uh, for yourself. Uh, it's up to you if you want to get one. I've got one. <laughs> and uh, I'll leave it there. I need to come in for a landing. So as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.